Mic check one two. Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio, right here on Live Hip Hop Daily. I'm Maurice Gall. I got my man Brandon Peters to my left. What's happening, bro? How you been, man? Sit all. Uh, I've been doing a lot. Got down. I'm, I'm good though. I'm good. How about you, man? I'm good. I can't <laughs> complain, man. It's crazy ass weather. It's 80 degrees one day, 20 the next, 39 the next. This, this shit is. It's why everybody's sick. Yeah, man, I'm actually starting to believe Bill Nye and shit, man. Like, I ain't used to pay attention to dude, but he used to be like, oh, man, global warming, shit's fucking up. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, dude. But now, uh, I was like, yeah, I, bro, I should be paying attention to science people now. <laughs> global, dude, global warming is for, bro, la- after after we recorded last week, I flew to Detroit. It was 64 degrees and sunny. The next day, it was 10 inches of snow on the ground. Like, 24-hour period, 40-degree temperature shift. Like, that shit is insane, man. But, yo, we appreciate y'all listening. We appreciate y'all watching on uh, Live Hip Hop Daily. Make sure that you uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. And, man, we, uh, you know, normally y'all watch us for the hip hop and all uh, that stuff. But we got some R&B singers that they look like they rappers. Don't run up on them. <laughs> but we got uh, Hamilton Park in the building, man. How y'all doing, fellas? Oh, yo, what's good? What's good? It's Marcus Free. Yo, it's Chris Boyce. Of course, I go by the name of Anthony. Like you said, this is Hamilton Park. Y'all See, they practice that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, anytime you don't have to ask a group to introduce themselves, they are professionals. They are professionals. Specialism, so, man. Specialism. So, yeah, man. So, listen, you guys, a lot of people know you from, you know, doing a Scream tour. A lot of people know you from when you guys were on Atlantic. Um, and that was, you know, we're talking, you know, seven, eight years ago. At this point, because I think you guys came out in what, 2011? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 2011. So, God damn, it's shit. Yeah, the time flies. <laughs> time, time definitely flies. So, first and foremost, for the people that are already fans of yours, they're normally used to seeing y'all with four people. Yeah. Now it's three, y'all. What's going on? Yeah. Um, of course, this is Anthony again, but you know what I'm saying? It's going to always be love. You know what I'm saying? Royce B. He ain't, went, he ain't went nowhere. You know what I'm saying? We still a group. He's still a family. He's going to always be family. You know what I'm saying? We just moving. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Now you guys just dropped a project. What was it? March second. March second. March second. Um, the the EP. Uh, it was necessary. And then, you know, for those who have not listened to it, they pro- kind of provide. You know what's been going on over the yeah. last few years. But one thing that kind of stuck with me was you guys were talking about uh, on the interlude that it was necessary interlude of That's why right. you guys named the album that, and that you know the break was necessary to That's grow right. to plan to execute so talk about some of those plans and execution and more so some of the things you guys learned over that period of time absolutely um i, I just kick it off um you know the the whole aspect of it was necessary just kind of came about because um it actually just kind of sparked through conversation yeah. and uh, we were just having a conversation and it's like dang it was necessary everything that we endured everything that we went through everything that we experienced it was necessary so we had to name or we were compelled to name the album it was necessary um just kind of uh, going through the depressions of, of, of not being around my brothers, not not seeing movement um, kind of spark a flame and ignited a fire that, you know what I'm saying, that kind of just kind of just still burning. You know, we shot um, a series of three videos in a weekend, which for us, you know, um, Atlantic had us working, um, but we weren't working in that capacity. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it kind of changed the dynamic. It was like, wait a minute, hold up. And usually if we are, and this is Marcus Free, piggyback on it, if we are doing that much work on a label, we're not involved in the treatment. We're not involved right. in the wardrobe. Mm-hmm. We're not involved in the location. Creative control. We had to do all that. Um, shout out to Jacob Tor and um, Anthony for coming up with an awesome treatment for the storyline of the video, and it yeah. just makes so much sense. Like, you'll see, if you've watched all three of the videos in an order, you get the story, and it yes. tells the story. Right. Absolutely. Like, having this much time off, like, do you think this has, like, sparked your creativity on a level to where, like, you kind of starting over again? Because I know, like, when you come up with your first music, people say, that's the soundtrack of your whole life up to that point. But I can imagine having this many years, I was like, all oh, might might be the same thing. Yeah, most definitely. This is Chris Boyce. It does feel fresh. You know, we, when we took that hiatus, there were things that we did have to learn and things that we sat down and really concentrated on. Like, you know, it's kind of like an instant replay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Sat down and played back the whole situation and kind of sat back and watched ourselves, figured out what went wrong, what we did wrong. And we had to learn things too. Like I know for me, when when we took the hiatus, I took a little, I went and, you know, I put a couple singles out, you know, did, did, did some solo runs or whatever. And that's when I was really able to really realize being in a group, the difference between being in a group and being 
being solo. Like, there's no one to hide behind, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is right there in the forefront when you're a solo artist. And just, you know, being in a group, as long as we were, I started to miss my brothers. And just, you know, started longing for that camaraderie and that brotherhood that we had. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback on what CV was saying, like, you know, uh, we never really had an opportunity to tell our story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for, for a moment, it was the story of what people wanted us to be. You know what I'm saying? We were, we were signed to Atlantic through Andre Herrera. So, of course, with that type of person that come through that stature, of course, in his mind, he's recreating Jodeci. You know what right. I'm saying? And that, that, that was the footsteps that we were following, you know. And then we have, we have harmonies like Boys to Men. You know what I'm saying? We have uh, the coolness like Jagged Edge. And then you got, you know what I'm saying, just like that, that vibe like Jodeci, like you get Hamilton Park. You know what I'm saying? So we, what we've done now is just kind of have the opportunity, like you said, to have that creative control to just kind of uh, express us in the best light that we, that we see fit. And uh, Marcus Free, it's a dope part to your question. With that break, um, we were told a while ago, we was working with Pharrell Williams. He said um, music goes through a cycle. He just dropped it in here. You know what I'm saying? We was working with Pharrell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he said. <laughs> no, I mean, mean, he said Pharrell <laughs> Williams. <laughs> like Atlanta there's Atlanta. another Pharrell out there. This man. They had a lot of people, you know, man. <laughs> That's another plus about the label. They had you working with the big, yeah. the big guns. And you yeah. learn and you soak it up. You know, so we, we was working with, honestly, we was working with Pharrell. We was down in Circuit House. The guys that did Bad Boys, yeah. Bad Boys, they got yeah. the studio. We was down in Circuit House. And he was like, Yo, music, music yeah. goes through this five year. Like every five years, it, it changes. Yeah. And the beautiful part about it, we were able to like watch, like step back, and, and God is so awesome. Absolutely. We were able to step back and just watch everything, yes, sir. Yeah. weed out, stuff come in, not work. Okay, we see that. Yeah. And then we're yeah. able to step back in and to apply what, we, what we've observed. And um, I always say, hip hop has evolved, yeah. um, country has evolved, pop so, has evolved. Why can't the R&B group evolve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with this project, where it was necessary, uh, we decided that we wanted the sound to be like, we're not chasing nobody. We're not chasing Jodeci. We're not chasing J.E. We're not, it's time for R&B groups to go to the next level now. Absolutely. It's uh, crazy that you guys said that because watching old videos, watching old performances, and now it's like night and day because before you guys seemed packaged, you yeah. seem like these are the dance moves you need to do. This is how you need to dress. Yep. These yep. are the harmonies you need <laughs> to be using. These you are the notes expect. you need to be in. This is what works with R&B groups. Right. Yeah. And now it seems like you guys are having fun. Absolutely. Oh, and, and just to kind of piggyback on, on, on your observation is the fact that, um, like we were saying, uh, the, the label kind of put or stifled us to a degree um, in that capacity. But they, they were walking around us and asking questions like, why do guys always seem like they're down? Or why do guys always seem like they're mad? Or why do guys always seem like they're upset? Now, we weren't mad, sad, or upset because, shoot, we on a screen tour. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, hey, we out here. You know what I'm saying? J.E. performed with us. Uh, not J.E., but uh, uh, Jermaine Dupree. He performed with us, you know what I'm saying, when we was here. You know what I'm saying? So we was hyped, you know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is there was just that stigma, or so that, 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 that stifling aura or persona that, you know what I'm saying, we weren't at liberty to be ourselves. To a degree, you know. Like, what do you think R&B is missing? Because, you know, like, I think that R&B is kind of, like, changed, like, to the point where, you know, some of it, I'm like, are you sure this is R&B, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, right, so right. What, what do you think R&B is missing, you know, in comparison to, like, you know, the things that you guys had to do your first go round, and you said that you want to see it evolve? Like, what do you think it's missing that it needs to grow to? Um, Marcus Free, I honestly think R&B is simply missing authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, Bison Tiller broke it. Um, Tory Lanez broke it. Um, like these artists just said, I don't care what R and B was. And Chris Brown kind of started it. He kind of yeah. took the first jump. Um, but R and B is missing. Just be authentic. Rappers like, man, I want to sing a little bit, so I'll sing. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's cliche or if it, if it is dangerous. I'm just gonna do it. R and B needs to stop worrying about the next artist and just be what you feel. Like, you have the dopest vibes. Like, when we was writing this project, the dopest songs came out when we were not trying to chase radio. Right. When we just said we were going to write authentic, authentic music to where we're at in our life, what we go through. And the crazy part about it, every, every guy is going through it. Every man is going through it. So, you know, R&B needs to stop trying to be the... Every R&B group was trying to be something. Hmm. In the past five to ten years, every R&B group was trying to either be B2K or either trying to be Jodeci or either trying to be Jack or either trying to be New Edition. Just be an artist. That's how you get your dope. What if a painter was trying to be the next painter? No, be yourself. Right. You know, so when you, when you become authentic and you become one with yourself, you, you, you'd be surprised the type of stuff you come up with. And people really dig that. 
especially females. You <laughs> dig when you sure you know yourself. <laughs> right. Why is it that, that why is it that you guys think that like there aren't as many R and B groups now though? Like we have a million solo artists. But we either have groups that come out and don't stay together. They do an album and they're gone. Or you just don't have people in groups anymore. Like, why do y'all think that is? You ain't David Revin? <laughs> just, Nobody no, came to just, see you, Otis. <laughs> I mean, no, Otis. But really, though, that matters. Just, just being, just based on the experience from being in the group, you know, you have the people that, that will single out, you know, the uh, individual in the group, so to speak, and you pull it out. You know, I like, just for, I don't, I really don't want to say who did it to me, but it was someone of high prestige yeah. mm. pulled me to the side and was like, you know, you. Mm. You, 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 you the truth in this group when right. you go solo right now. Yeah, you the bust the, that Beyonce bust rhymes treatment. Right. But, you know, but like when, when, you, when, you, when you got a, the type of bond that we have as brothers, you're not just so reluctant to jump ship like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, people that, you know, come from small communities and get exposed to an opportunity like that, you know, they're going to take it because they're going yeah. to sell. Yeah. And, you know, um, social media at, at the end of the day, man, I, I feel like a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways, social media has changed up artistry in itself Hmm. because prior to social media and just being able to be so in your face all the time you had to be polished to be on a record label you had to just like you said the proper dance moves the proper way to dress and stuff but social media just lets you be so free at all Hmm. times you can post whatever you think and you got artists like Bryson Tiller you know we're not they're not wearing the shiny suits anymore wearing (laughs) wearing ripped jeans and you know distressed tees and bomber jackets and really whatever we feel so the change up is just it's, it's a lot to do with that. And, and, and another thing to piggyback on what my brother is saying is that the fact that we grew up together organically, yep. you know what I'm saying? We weren't put together or placed yep. together. So when, when you find groups being placed together, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times there was groups that was out on YouTube that were put, you know what I'm saying, okay, they like this particular individual person, okay, we're going to put them with this group to try to make this work. Yep. It, it, it'll never work if it's not grown authentically and organic. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, we... <laughs> We woke up, you know what I'm saying, in the same room, you know same what I'm saying? Room. One room. <laughs> Marcus Snake, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> well, and the only one had a bed. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and a pillow. And a pillow. <laughs> and some sheets. <laughs> well, but like, I think we did that for years. Like, again, you know what I'm years. saying? We grew up our, our authentically, you know what I'm saying, together. So that bond can never be broken. And, 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 and you see it here, like, the, in the biblical principle, simply put, it says that a three-stranded cord cannot easily be broken. And that's where we find ourselves today. And that's another thing. Like, when you have that level of respect for your brother, that's like a LeBron and Steph Curry and Kevin. If they were on the same, they have that level. Like, I know he cold. I know he cold. Like, you just have that level of respect. He's like, for me to think I can even try to step away, like, that's suicide. Like, we're stronger together. Now, don't get us wrong. We'll mess you up with our solo projects. But together, we're like Megatron or something, you know? Definitely. 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 Um, <laughs> the the project I was peeping like was it uh, uh was it on purpose that the songs were were shorter and you get in and out like I think the whole project was seventeen minutes yep. and some change yeah. so yeah. is that the the short attention span of the audience like of let's course. hit them with everything you do not want to suicide your project you <laughs> right do. right one thing we understood we understood where music was and we understood like we had to first not get their attention. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we have to understand our fans. We have to understand that our fans started off, they were in middle school, high school. Yeah. Now they're in high school, college. Yeah. So we, we couldn't come back with a whole chorus, bridge, break down, vamp it out. It's just too much for the first time. You give them a sample. Right. Okay. You get them back knowing you. You hit them with your colors. And then, you know, you give them the full thing on the LP. Absolutely. And, 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 and again, we had a focus group, so all, all of this oh, was strategic. Okay. We had a focus yep. group prior to the EP coming out to kind of help us develop uh, the sound, what we wanted to do. Um, so we had some, some of our fans, old and new. Uh, we had uh, tastemakers come out and uh, just take yeah. a listen, a first listen, very, very first listen. We started with, and, like, eight, eight songs? No, we started out. Yeah, it was eight. eight it was eight no, songs. Eight, eight or ten. Eight, 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 ten. eight to ten songs that we played. And we dumped and, um, down to those. The best ones made it. You know what I'm saying? So that gave um, them, you know what I'm saying, the forthright, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we had something to do with this project. Yeah, right. So it's a collective effort. So now the pro- now the new music is out. Like, how have you been receiving the feedback, good and bad? Because you know, I can imagine you come out and folks are like, oh, we love you. Then you disappear. Like, damn, what happened to them? Then you come <laughs> back. Like, well, nigga, this is what I think. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Like, how have you been receptive to the feedback, good and bad? Thankfully, 
it's been a blessing, bro. Like everybody that's been been on board has circled back around. Like, oh my God, I miss y'all. Yeah. Like y'all, y'all giving us that's what we've dope. been missing. We all we've been missing. Like even today, we got like a plethora of just likes and and. Uh, yeah. By the way, we're gonna be at Alibi tonight, but uh, we got a plethora of likes and 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 support, um, which we've always had. You know, we have our core our core. Uh, HP sweethearts that rock with us to the day we fall off. You know what I'm yep. saying? And I mean, off this earth, that means six feet under. You feel yeah. me? Um, we were just out in uh, North Carolina. They came out to the, uh, the celebrity basketball game we played in. You know what I'm saying? So we always have support. And yeah. even to that point, um, one of our sweethearts, and um, she made sure to take us all in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have fans. I hate for our fans. We have supporters that will go to bat for us, and we don't have to. We, some stuff, they go to bat for us. We didn't even know what, it was an issue. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you have supporters like that, it's just like you can overlook any negative energy or any bad karma that somebody's trying to shoot you down with. But, you know, when you got following like that, it just keeps you so motivated and moving forward, you know. That's dope. And, and, and also, too, you know, when we, when we did put out this, this, this EP, um, we charted at uh, 73 on iTunes. Um, so we're definitely top 200, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that's a blessing, you know what I'm saying, to take a hiatus and to come back, if you will, and um, and still have that level of support that shows dynamic, you know what I'm saying? Well, um, other than, you know, not having creative control when you guys first came through, you got, I'm sure you learned a ton over those years. Yeah. What was it that made you be 100% like we want to be independent on this project? Oh, wow. It's so much. Mm-hmm. Um Freedom, man. I don't think an artist will understand the real meaning, the artist part, yeah. not like as a human, but as an artist. I don't think they'll ever understand the real meaning of freedom when you own everything you do. Yeah. When you can, they made Chris cut his hair when we went to the label. True wow. story. You know, so when you have someone pretty much, like you, it's like we was working a nine to five, but we living our dream, but we still got an answer to somebody. Yeah. Now we are our own bosses. Yeah. Like even the treatment. We did for uh, the three videos. They would try to control that, Absolutely. and you 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 do this to be free. You don't do this to go right back into in the, into being controlled. And, you know, it's and, and what it is they get you. They um, you need the machine to a degree. Mm-hmm. You need the machine. You need what it provides. But at the same time, it's more liberty in just taking that chance, leaping out on faith, and say, "God, I'll trust you," huh. until it don't work. And then it don't work. I mean, it's something else that's gonna work. Speak. Right. So. You know, with this freedom that we have, we're going to win no matter what because we have full control. The only reason we would not win is if we choose not to just do it. Right. So, you know. Not so, only the full control, but the work ethic. That's priority. The yeah. work ethic is priority. Like, if at the end of the it, day, it <laughs> absolutely. You know, the universe is so, like, it, it's reciprocal. Like, you know, the, what you put out, that's what you're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're going to get out of it. What you, what you give, that's what you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? You give haphazard. You give laziness. You, you give unstructured. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're going to receive. You know what I'm saying? But you give power. You, you speak power. You speak life to your situation. You, you know what I'm saying? You put in the work at it. That's what you're going to get out of it. Like you said, in this situation, like if you don't do it, it don't get done. So that's it. Like what, what are some things that you have to do now that you're like, oh, God damn, this, this comes with it too? Because I remember like interviewing another group and yeah. kind of like went from being on the label to independent. They're like, yeah. damn, bro, I got Got to book our own hotel? Hey, yeah. register, your car? Right. <laughs> register your music. That's what I'm saying. I was like, what? What, right. is, what you mean? We got to register the music? Yes. Man, we were getting ready to get some, some, some radio spins. Yes. We was on our way to the... Um, to North Carolina. To North Carolina. And so we like, oh, we got some DJs. Going, oh, bet, bet. Management like, up, oh, pause. <laughs> Who registered the... the uh, I'm like, what you mean? So it's just like stuff you don't even think about. Yeah. Like what a label does. And then... and. Me being closer to like the production and the writing side, splits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, making sure I ain't gonna put nobody business out. The percentages are right. People get funny when that when that when they see that the numbers. Um, when they see that the music moving up. But right, yeah. People coming back to you re- trying to renegotiate what they said off rip. It's yeah. just like wow. I see why a label picked they boys to do the production. Yeah. Like it makes so much mm-hmm. sense because now you know you, you you get to see like wow. Okay, so this is how we're gonna move on the next project. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So we, and the crazy part, we're learning yeah. on this. So the second project, oh, man, we we, we recouping everything, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's a lot we learned, man. It is a lot. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but that's that's a big part for me because I'm so that's involved it. with, like, the writing and the producers. Yeah. Right. It's just like, man, you, you have a conversation with somebody, and then later on when the project is working and it's eating, now they want to sit down at the table again. 
Mm, it's not do. confident yet. So paperwork, paperwork. Thank you. Paperwork. So, paperwork. No. I tell you. Yeah, man. So it makes a lot of sense why the, how the label moves, how they move it. Like me and my homeboy, Dre, the press, he does, he, he's wrote um, pretty much 90% of the album. Mm-hmm. Awesome writing team. Um, Absolutely. He was just telling me, like, yeah, man, we got to learn how to produce. Yeah. We need to learn how to produce. Yeah. Not uh, besides writing, because imagine if we wrote and produced everything. Mm-hmm. You know how splits work is broken down half and half. Right. If we wrote everything, that's everything coming right back to the house. Yeah. You know, so and, and even as far as like um how we distribute our music, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Whatever platform that we decide to use, like TuneCore, et cetera, you know what I'm saying? Just trying that method and, and, and posting and going back and forth with the emails, yo, we gotta have this this hard date, like let's go, you know. Play time, uh, don't play with at all. Email. No, play. Oh <laughs> my god. Can you get this image up? Can right. we get this this yeah. order? You know what I'm saying? So just going through those motions is 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 um intense. <laughs> so I'll look. send a text saying, hey, can you send me such 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 check your email. I'm talking to you right now, just send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> check your email. I'm like, come on. But you get it because it creates structure. Absolutely. You know, so it makes Definitely. sense. Definitely. Who were your your musical influences when you were trying to get on versus your musical influences when y'all were recording this and, and coming back together? Oh man, well I, I'll start that off. Uh, for me, um, in the beginning, initially, um, you know, Jodeci, of course, Jagged Edge, Commission. You have uh, Boys to yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Boys to Men. Man, uh, you don't know homies unless you know commission. <laughs> Dude, Listen. my cousin Danny used to sing backup for them like Word. back in the oh. day. Yeah, yeah, Word. yeah. Cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, for sure. But but now you know, um, I think my 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 taste has grown into a different space. Like Ty Dolla Sign, you know, what I'm saying yeah. of course Chris Brown, um, Tank. Of course, he's gonna always be the big homie. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it for me. Like earlier on, it was like Cisco and, and Drew Hill and and, and genuine gotcha. and yeah and, and Tank and artists like that. But now more so, just like Ant said, it's like Ty Dolla Signs and Tony Lanes and and just I, I like Future. You know, like Future, I think he's a phenomenal songwriter and artist. Like for real, for real, don't sleep yeah. on. Him. Like, you know, it's like artists like that. I guess for me, it would have to be like um, Jamie Fox. Like I like characters more than just singers. I like characters. Jamie Fox, um, Stevie Wonder, and because I like I, I'm a keyboardist too, gotcha. so I like singer players and um, Tank also. But now it would probably have to be like your Eric Bell, your songwriters again, Eric, Bell- Eric Bellinger, Oakland, yeah, people like that. Oh, he said Oakland. <laughs> oh, you said Oakland? We we breed great. Oh, Y'all that, seen black that was one. That was one. Come on, now. yes sir. Okay. Y'all okay. seen Black Panther? Yes, sir. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. Uh, that's crazy. Y'all said Ty Dolla Sign. We talk all the time. Like I don't think people really realize just how talented oh, that dude Ty's is. Cold. He's, He's a monster. Cold. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. Is problem is what it is. Huh? He's a problem. He from the church. No, his father uh, played in. I don't know what he does now, but his father was in a funk band. See, and I'm drawing, oh, a, wow. I'm drawing a blank. See? Mm. He got like, a code. dude. His ties, like, but it's 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 genetic. Like he was right. telling me, exactly. I did a. Um, actually, they were out here. Him and Bob did a cover of this magazine, nice. probably like a year or two ago, and I wow. did the cover story. And he was talking about his daughter. And he was like, how everything goes full cycle. Like he would walk into the room and mess around with instruments when he was young. And he was like, they were making a beat or just jamming out of something at his crib. And his four-year-old daughter came into the room and was basically replaying oh, what wow. they were doing. Oh, wow. Like, no training whatsoever. Yeah. So it's just the musical wow. genius runs in the family. family. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Definitely, um, the, how, Definitely. how he hear melodies, lyrics. Yeah. He's crazy. He's a beast. Boy, oh, yeah. He, he, he's absolutely. And I, I don't know if people really get it, but. And he, I you think know. he made a point to say that he said he's a singer. Like, yeah. No, yeah, he's rapper. not a rapper. Yeah, I hate yeah. He was yeah. like, I've never spit a bar in my life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not a rapper. Uh, one thing you guys brought up was the evolution of music, and um, I, I wanted to get your opinion uh, on the, the, the lines that are now blurred between mm-hmm. hip-hop and R&B. Mm-hmm. Um, they're completely blurred. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um. And it's so blurred that even pop culture has started to adapt to some of the hip hop and R and B stuff. Like, um, what's the girl uh, Kalani? She's yeah. considered pop. This girl's doing rap and R and B blends. Yeah. So I think Chris Brown had a good uh, part of doing that. If you go back to even on Fame a little bit, I think like on Fame, and then he came up to uh, what was it, Loyal? What's his, uh, what's it, uh, Royal? 
You wouldn't want his name after his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So like Chris Brown kind of he kind of started a lot of that where you could just erase the lines, and that's some trailblazer stuff, man. Yeah. So where you can just and I and, and even Nelly kind of was doing it, but it wasn't popular then. Mm. But yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like if you go back and you look, like your mic. there it's been it's been singers like, like the line has been slowly being blurred yes. over time for the longest. Yeah. I mean, because if you go back, you know, Fifty was. Making fun of Ja Rule for singing on all of his songs. See, was I was doing that's right. Ja Rule was doing it. Bubble gum rapper, you doing all this singing and stuff like that, and, and virtually ended his career for that. But now you got people yeah, out man. here doing the same thing today. Yeah, yep. So it's like you got you got you got Future doing what he does, and you got like I mean Party Next Door. He's a singer, but still like Clever. it's just it's just so blurred. Like you yeah. don't even know. Yeah, a lot of it is cadences too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's what this music is going more vibrations. Mm-hmm. Like it's more the vibe. Like, it's more like you can make a whole song with just mumbles. Absolutely. And that's kind of where we're at right now. But it's just a vibe. <laughs> it don't always mean, yeah. but it's, it's a vibe. It don't always make sense. Up. It don't not, and it's just a vibe. So it's, it's real heavy like that. It's real like just the vibe of it all. And that plays a big part of songwriting, too. Absolutely. Yep. In what way? Explain. So, like, if you're songwriting and you're overwriting, you're cheaping your, your melody because you're trying to overwrite it. But if you just, like, you got, like, I know when we writing, we'll just go in there and try to come up with a beautiful or a dope melody. Mm-hmm. And then we'll plug in the lyrics. Words, yeah. But if you're trying to sacrifice the melody for the pen, you're not going to, that's how they used to write. You're not going to get what's now. Yeah. Now rappers are just going there. Da, 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 da. And then they'll hear, like, the, and that's the dope part. The auto-tune will give you a melody. Yeah. And then for us, we can actually sing the melody. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we'll, once we get that, and we'll pull it back and just come in with some clever stuff. That's like, cool. Loyal. Um, I remember when Dre was writing Loyal, he had the melody. And then you could just hear the lyrics in it, kind of. Baby, I should have been, should have been more loyal. And it, it just naturally happens like that. You know, I kind of like what music is now compared to where it used to be. You just have to overwrite. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> True. Um, one, one thing I, I, I think part of, and again, I thought it was kind of genius that you talked about all of these other genres have evolved, but R&B has not evolved. Do you think part of the reason for that is because R&B writers and singers feel like they have to stay in the writing about love and relationships pocket versus writing about whatever they want to write about? Because if you, I, I said, and I want to let you go in, but if you look at it, like when you look at back in the day, like you mentioned Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. you can be five years old or 80 years old and play songs in the key of life from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. There was a pocket of people who loved Solange, yeah. but people started really fucking with Solange after this last album because it struck a chord with people beyond just relationships or whether you single, whether you mm-hmm. with somebody. So do you think that that's part of the reason it hasn't evolved, especially because you were talking about lyrics and not overwriting? Because sometimes... The best stuff is the most simple stuff. Yeah, I'll piggyback. Uh, it has lacked transparency. And mm. what you just spoke about was that transparency. And that's what Solange did. She became transparent. Yeah. And, um, and, and to be honest with you, of course, there's a stigma in the R&B sect, I guess you would, or the genre, that you just kind of have to say talk about relationships because that's the most relatable. Mm. But um, the road less traveled is that transparency. You know, be transparent, and that's what we've done with this album. It was necessary. We're being transparent. We're opening up front about what we have experienced, what we've gone through, jumping off um, the video. You know, that was a real authentic pool party. Shout out to Jay Couture Productions, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) This is that transparency. We like to party, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Guy meets girl. Guy want to hang out with girl. Go to the Waffle House after the fact, and then, you know, if the conversation leads a little bit further than y'all, hey, at the hey, crib. Take the sheet. Transparent. Take the sheet. <laughs> and another thing on that, with this project and with them singles, R&B, we got to stop over singing. Everything ain't got to be, Ugh. everything <laughs> on God. Like, from jumping off to love me to sleep, it just vibe. It was sauce. It was, it was just yeah. flow. Don't mess up the vibe trying to be so talented. Yeah. You know. Definitely not. That makes perfect sense, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So will you guys be be doing? Because I'm sure you've heard from several of your fans. Like, all right, we love this, but what's up with the album? Because they probably think y'all gonna go away for another seven years or oh, something. Oh, they oh, <laughs> <laughs> and we out. Back to black. We are we are gonna be doing an album. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely on the way. You know, no dates or anything like that. We just well, right now we're just focusing on this EP. Yeah. We're just enjoying that. You know, we're happy to be back in in in. In, in the spotlight, so to speak, you know, and, and, and we're happy that our fans are happy to see us. So we're just 
kind of, you know, stand in this moment. There's definitely an album on the way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and, we, and besides, we're still celebrating this E3 release. You know what I'm definitely, saying? Hey, definitely. we've been a lot of places. places. And even like tonight, we got another spot that we're hitting up tonight again. Um, sure, we'd have been to North Carolina for the CIAA. Yeah. Uh, definitely turned up in Onyx. Hey, can't believe. Hey, listen, it was a movie. Check out the timeline. It was a movie. <laughs> we making movies out here. So, I mean, we're just really just trying to push this EP. Uh, first and foremost, and of course we're gonna have um, a few television appearances here and there. Yes, you know so. what I'm saying? Um, and coming up next month in April, we just got some information about um, a live show that we're yes. gonna be doing. Um, ATL Live is coming back. Um, yeah. We just got booked for that, so we turning up. You know what I'm saying? I'm hot at your boys. We out. It's just so dope how the city just showing us love like we never went away. It's yeah. just like wow, that ain't nothing but God, man. Like to just it's like we never went away. People open up doors for us, and they like come on. Right. So yeah, and that goes back to the forethought that like when you when you sit back, you analyze your situation, you process it, you come up with a strategic plan, and then you execute it. And then once you execute that plan, um, again, the universe is only gonna give you what you put into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just can't go out here haphazardly and thinking that it's just gonna come to you like a few artists that I know in particular do. You know, but um, hey, just grind, grind it out. It's the grind game. You know what I'm saying? We've watched Wiz Khalifa grind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, even before he came to Atlantic, you know, um, we we watched his growth and how he kind of moved. You know what I'm saying? And and some of that inspired me. You know what I'm saying? On the independent side, you know, to how to have that hustle independently, and then you know go major. I, one thing I was peeping at, like back in the day, like you said, Atlantic put y'all in there with everybody. Like yeah, man. y'all had songs with everybody, yes, like, sir. rappers, producers, yeah. bunch of fame. So being able to go in there with your own team and kind of do your thing was that kind of refreshing for you guys? Hell yeah! Can we say hell yeah? Yeah, hell yeah! Say whatever you want to say. Hell yeah! Man, to be able just to be like, like we was able to sit with the like even on Roy, we was able to sit with the producer like, nah, I'll take that out or like that. Yeah. Right. I'll put that in. Yeah. We came up with the order of the project. We came up from zero. We cooked it. Vegas, all, all that. We cooked it. Yeah. Like. Look on the streets, <laughs> but I, I ain't saying I'm not saying. <laughs> but it feels so good to like, and then it's like, like I got a daughter. It's like seeing your like, and I ain't good with you know preparing her to go out into the world like as far as hair and clothes. Right. But it's like I actually put on a good outfit. I actually did her hair good. You know, all people was complimenting her outfits. So it's like, man, we did a good job with this project. We sit back like, yo, this is all us, no label. Definitely, and they loving it. It's like wow, man. We could, and and, it, and and this is for all independent artists, independent labels. Don't fear what you don't know. Step into it. Try it. Keep trying it. And I promise you, if you keep trying it, it's gonna win. Don't stop trying. And that's one thing we didn't do. We we did a first photo shoot, and um, this is when we first started. <laughs> I gotta tell the story every interview we go to. We did our first photo shoot, and we thought we was doing it big. Yeah. And um, so we put it put it out, and the blogger reached out to us and said, we want to do an interview with you guys. We have to see, we want to do our first interview back. We was like, okay, bet, bet. So she did an interview, put it up on, on social media. Joy quickly sent us a nice message that said, uh, cease and desist. Cease and desist, or whatever that, that <laughs> is. We're talking about snatch it down, pause what you're doing. I'm finna come and join the team and like show y'all what we need to do. Oh. Yeah. And so that, yeah, it was old. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, it was like, old. old. <laughs> but it was like, wow, okay, bet, we back. But I say that to say, like, keep going. People Absolutely. are watching, yeah. and the white right people will come. Yeah. You just got to stay, you gotta stay cons- consistent in it. Definitely. Man, stay I love y'all energy. Before we wrap the show, I want to conclude y'all in the conversation. We always talk about uh, different topics yeah. that are going on. So, especially because you're a production guy. I've been having this debate all week with people. I didn't get to talk to you about it. Everybody's <laughs> excited about this new Fonte album. I've always been the lyrics. Are y'all familiar guy. with Fonte? Slightly. Little brother, Fonte. Fonte is the reason Drake is Drake. Drake will tell you that in the oh. and Like, he idolizes that dude. So, I've always been a lyrics guy first. Always. Yeah. I think this is the first time that I've ever listened to a project and I was like, I hate these beats. I don't care what he's saying. I love what he's saying. It's so you ain't never listen to Nas. You ain't never listen to Nas. I don't listen. Is he against I don't, it? I don't listen to the Wack Nas albums. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yo! But listen. But the thing is, you gotta listen to all Nas. You gotta listen to all Nas. <laughs> no, I can't. So this is my thing, though. 
So I have to say, and I love Fonte lyrically. What he's saying is amazing. Like, if y'all get a chance, what is it? No news is good news. It's the name of the album. He's talking about shit that I don't think I've ever heard rappers talk about before. Like, he has a song talking about, he has a line saying he went to his father's funeral went to the repast yeah, and ate, ate the, the same, same shit, shit that, that was killed. killed his daddy. Oh, wow. So, wow. like, talking about his mom got a stint in her heart, but she's still smoking Newports. <laughs> what wow. Like, right. real shit. Wow. Real shit. But the really beats shit. are horrible. And it <laughs> makes it so hard. Like, I've tried to listen to this album four times since it came yeah, out. I hit just yesterday, just Blaze, and I was like, "Have you listened to this?" Because I respect his opinion on yeah. music. He's one of the greatest producers. Now you want to put Just Blaze? I'm not going to say it. 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 Was, but essentially, he told me to listen to it again to an extent. Well, his opinion made me listen to it again, okay. and okay. I did. And I was like, "I see what they're saying, but these beats are not good." And I was saying, "Who is a worse beat picker, Fonte or Nas?" Dang, I don't know if that's a good debate. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, I mean, I'm saying, he's a yeah, trash as a beat picker. <laughs> yeah, like, like, Nas has consistently picked bad beats for, in consecutive years. Man, you can't say that about Fonte yet. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This, like, this, this is a man <laughs> that... <laughs> this, is a man that <laughs> like, this is a man that... He's yeah. been an R&B singer for like the last 10 years. And that's the he, problem. He, he raps when it's like, okay, fine, nigga, fine, damn, here's a rap album. You know what I'm saying? That's so the problem. I don't the know if we could be like, like, like Hidden Beach. Oh, hidden wow. Beach. He said what? Hidden, 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 hidden Beach. beach. <laughs> Y'all remember the Hidden <laughs> Beach? This guy just said. Y'all remember the Hidden Beach albums? <laughs> no, bro. Why are you giving it to him? I'm just saying. Fuck, that is not Hamilton Park's opinion. Right. I'm, just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But for y'all, like, with beat, like, what comes first? Yeah, is it the lyrics or the music? Which, it's which the music? One? The music is always gonna make you vibe. Yeah. And then with the music, then the lyrics gonna come. And, and sometimes the music can help the lyrics come easier. You know what I'm saying? A good, great beat, or a great beat selection or production. You know what I'm saying? That always makes the the better difference than anything. You know what I'm saying? People gonna vibe vibe to the beat more so than they vibe with your lyrics. Yeah. Because again. I listen to a lot of music that I don't even understand half the stuff that they be saying, but, oh, it's the vibe. Oh, this, this my, you know what I'm saying? It's my joint, you know? Which is not even a new thing, because nobody understood everything Bone was saying. No. Yeah. At all. Is that the name of that? But we like the music. <laughs> yeah. We love the yeah. music. And that's another melody-driven um, artist. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Bone Thugs and Harmony. That was their name. That's the name. That's yeah. the rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't articulate a lot of stuff yeah. that you're saying, but, hey, it's that vibe on it. You know what I'm saying? He's on the cadence. You know what I'm saying? But it's you can... Beat. Have a song where the where you have melody lyrics first, and then someone comes and make a beat, and it didn't come out hot. It's That's just true. it's usually done opposite. Yeah. I think, but I, I think uh, four 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 is a great example of that. Like those Absolutely. beats are not phenomenal. Um, Jay Z, but yeah, yeah. but the oh, concepts amazing. are so amazing. Yes, yeah, and the things he's saying are so amazing. Like you don't even hear that. But yeah. and also, I think like the way it was mixed and mastered yeah. makes that the makes lyrics a big difference stand too. Out that makes a big difference too. So that's that's definitely an example of what you guys are saying. I, and I, I also think it's a perfect time for you guys to be here, being independent, working hard, pushing the project. And uh, yes, Sunday was the Oscars. Jordan yeah. Peele, first black man ever to win screenwriter. Yes, and yeah, I didn't sir. know that he Let's said go, brother. Nice. he stopped writing that movie 20 yes, times. times. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's one of those stories of just never giving up. Absolutely. Right, right. Relentless. You got to be relentless. It, 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 in any of of your approaches, you have to be relentless, like and, and resilient. So even if you do fall down, you bounce back. Um, I think what Thomas Edison created the light bulb, but you know before he had an yeah, opportunity. Well, he's kind of like a thief, but. That's true. What y'all gonna say? Hey, he's kind of he's pimping niggas. <laughs> hey, hey, Eddie, take that again. <laughs> what I'm saying though, you know, I get you. Though, no, I get you. I was saying you had the other day to lit up and shit. Do that again. I think he thinks he's gonna pay me a lot for that. I can't even nickel on the dollar. <laughs> but no, saying. that's a good point though. But another thing, think of. I think we overcomplicate like. Being successful, like simplify that mug, nigga. What else is there to do? <laughs> Why you gonna? What else you gonna do? Yeah. Why stop? Yeah. We just gonna live, nigga, and don't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so I do this thing a billion times till it work. Mm. You know, it's, right. uh, that's the thought pattern behind it. Like, if I don't do this, what? Uh, what, what, what else is there to do? do? You just gonna wake up and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta respect Shoot. that, man. I, yeah. I, I definitely, you gotta respect resiliency, man. Yeah. And yeah. I, I definitely like what you guys are doing. Times. You have. 
Yeah, 20 times. Yeah. Nice. I'm a writer. Think about it at seven. He was like, Phew, I'm almost there. <laughs> right. And then, it, dude, it's amazing how much stuff that, that, like, you go through. Like, one of my homeboys has, I'm not going to say his name because he might still be trying to sell it, has a script that I edited his script in 2008. Yeah. And it's gone through at least five to ten, like, major kind. Everybody will. Packard yeah. done seen wow. it. When yeah. 50 was doing movies, he's seen it. Yeah. Warner Brothers, Lionsgate. Dang, everybody. And it's an yeah. incredible script. And yeah. he's had big actors sign on or whatever, and it yeah. still hasn't got to the green light process wow. yet. Mm-hmm. So, but when it gets there, Absolutely. you need one, yes. Gonna be like, you just need one. It's, it's, it's going to be amazing. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? Absolutely. It's going to be amazing. But man, yes, I, I, I really appreciate you guys coming through. You guys have you great energy, man. Appreciate it. For man. sure. Thank I'm glad happen. we can make this happen. Congrats on the project, thank man. You, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully yeah. they'll be seeing y'all out on the tour this summer. Yes, sir. It's somebody to be lit, man. Please tell them where to find you on all your social media. Yo, man, y'all make sure y'all holler at us on Instagram at This Is Hamilton Park. Facebook, the same. And yeah. Make sure y'all go get that EP. It yeah. was go and get it. It was necessary I everywhere. Right now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Doing it big. HP season. We back. Let's go. Sauce Gods. Yeah, man. And of course, I go by the name of Anthony. Yo, it's Chris Voice. I'm Marcus Free, and we are Hamilton, Hamilton Park. Park. I thought they was going to sing the Hamilton Park. <laughs> <laughs> I <thought> HP. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> we, said, that way. we appreciate y'all listening uh, through our partners at CLNS Media. Yeah. We appreciate y'all watching on Live Hip Hop Daily. We'll see you next week with another dope show.